In this video, I'm going to take you step by step on how to turn your Raspberry Pi into a VPN server. Let's get into it. A VPN or virtual private network allows you to connect to a private network even while on another network. You may have seen advertisements for other VPN services such as NordVPN and ExpressVPN. Those are great services and allow you to use the internet safely and securely even while on a public network. My name is Patrick and this is Everyday Tech, Everyday Tech for Everyday People. Today we're talking about how we can turn a Raspberry Pi into a VPN server for your home and talk about practical ways we can use it. Before I get into this video, let me quickly talk about this case from KKSB. Now KKSB makes high quality cases for Raspberry Pi and other single board computers. Now they did send this to me for free, but they're not reviewing any videos before I release it. They're not even asking for a dedicated video on this, what, but I will do a dedicated video on this particular case in the near future. Here I have the Raspberry Pi for aluminum case, tall edition. And they also did send me the cooling fan, which comes separately, but I'm really liking this case. So for more information, check out the links in the description below and let's go on to the video. So the first thing we're gonna do is install a fresh copy of Raspbian. And we're using the Raspberry Pi Imager here, version 1.7.3, which is the latest version as of this recording. Now I'm not gonna go through all the detailed step-by-steps that I'm taking here, but you can check out my dedicated video I did on this process here. So we're gonna make sure to choose the light version of Raspbian. We don't need the desktop environment. And I already have my SD card in here, so I'm gonna go through this process right now. Okay, so I have everything installed. I took out my SD card, I put it back into the Raspberry Pi, turned the power on, and I've also connected it to my network. Now you can do this on Wi-Fi, but I rec I would recommend hooking up your Raspberry Pi directly to your network via an ethernet cable. But here you're gonna need a terminal program. The terminal program built in Mac is just fine, or you can use PuTTY on Windows. But here you're gonna need the IP address, or since I configured the host name already on here, I'm gonna do test.local. I made the host name called test. Now, in, if you don't have the ability to do this, for example, on some Windows machines, then you're gonna, instead of test.local, you have to put the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. And now, once we are in our Raspberry Pi here, we wanna make sure that it's updated with the latest. So we're gonna to go to sudo apt update. And then we're gonna go sudo apt upgrade after this finishes downloading the updates here. Let's do that really quickly here. So that actually took four to five minutes there. And that's gonna depend on your speed and the version of Raspberry Pi that you have. I actually have the Raspberry Pi 4 with four gigabytes of RAM here, so it's pretty fast, but your speeds may vary. So now we're ready to install the VPN software. Now we're gonna use something called Pi VPN. You can go to pivpn.io. All the documentation can be found there, more detailed instructions on what I'm showing you here. But to install, we're gonna simply copy and paste a command line that they have on pivpn.io. And we're gonna go and go ahead and install the VPN software. And it's gonna go through all these updates here. So now we're gonna be prompted with different prompts here. And you, you can read through these different things. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. These are the settings for my local uh, VPN server here. I'm gonna say, uh, yes, keep using DHCP. Um, and this is if your IP address on your local area network changes a lot. So we're gonna go ahead and choose the default user as Pi. Okay, so now we come to the different uh, options that we have here. Pi VPN supports the installation of two different VPN servers, WireGuard and OpenVPN. I'm gonna choose WireGuard for various reasons. I'll explain that later, but WireGuard tends to be a little bit faster and a little bit easier to install on other computers, which you'll need to connect to your VPN server. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on WireGuard. If you're already familiar with OpenVPN and you prefer OpenVPN, then go ahead and choose OpenVPN. 
And here we're going to just choose the default port and I'm going to explain the ports a little bit later. And here we can really choose any of the DNS servers here. I'm going to choose open DNS. It really doesn't matter, but if you don't know what this is, just go ahead and choose open DNS. You can't really go wrong with any of these DNS servers. And on this screen, it's showing my public IP address. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose that. And those last screens just basically said, I want to do automatic updates to this server. And this tells you how to add a client profile. Before you can actually use the VPN server, you need to create a client profile that's installed on one of your other computers to connect to this VPN server. But we're gonna get back to this in a moment. And then all we need to do is just reboot our VPN server here and come back into it later on. Before we get to the last step of our setup in our VPN server, let's talk about networking and home networking. I'm gonna talk about port forwarding. If you already know what port forwarding is and know how to set it up in your network, go ahead and skip to the next chapter of this video. Our home internet setup usually runs on a cable modem if you have cable uh, internet or a gateway. And in my case, I have Verizon Fios, so I have a Fios gateway. That modem or gateway has an IP address, a public IP address that you get from your internet service provider. That IP address is like the address to your home. So in my case here, I live at in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So that's how uh, you can get to my house. IP address is how we know you can get to your home network. Now software runs on, on the internet, runs on different ports. So web servers, if you're visiting a website, you're probably connecting via port 443 by default or port 80 if it's not secure. Different VPN software use different ports. So OpenVPN uses port 1194 by default. WireGuard uses 51820 by default as well. Well, in within your house or your home network, you also have different devices connected and every device gets a private IP address. That private, private IP address is usually given by the router. Your router is connected to your gateway or modem and it distributes all the traffic and it assigns IP addresses to the different devices. So now if we're connecting our from the outside network into our VPN server at home, we first connect to our public IP address, right? That's how we know we have how to get to our home network. But from there, the router needs to know where to direct that traffic to. And in this case, we want to get to our home VPN so uh, server that we're setting up right now. This is where port forwarding comes in. Port forwarding allows us to tell the router any traffic coming from a particular port directed to this particular device, in our, in our case, a Pi VPN server. So we're using WireGuard. So we're going to set up our router to do port forwarding. Anything coming from port 51820, route it to our Pi VPN server. Now, if I've confused you, I did my job. But I'm going to show you how I set it up in my router on my Fios network here at home. Here I'm logged into my router. I'm using the router that they gave me when I got my internet here, but your setup may be different, but I'm just gonna show you how I do this on this router from Verizon here. So I'm gonna go into advanced features here. We're gonna to go to security firewall port forwarding. And so here I'm gonna just type in WireGuard and I'm typing in 51820. This is the port coming in. We're gonna use the UDP protocol. We're gonna select our IP address of our device. I already know it, so I'm gonna just go ahead and type it in here. 192.168.1.231. Okay, and then we're gonna do port 51820, which is the final port on the server itself. And then we're gonna say always. So I'm not gonna hit add to list because I already have a VPN server set up, a Raspberry Pi set up for my VPN server, but let me show you where that is. Here it is. I have port forwarding all traffic coming from 51820 using the UDP protocol and forward it to my address here, my local device here, which is my other Raspberry Pi running a VPN server and running on 51820. But basically you need a router that supports port forwarding. Look for that port forwarding area to set up configuration 
and make sure 51820 is forwarding to your device on 51820 using the UDP protocol. The last thing I'll mention about networking is this solution may not work for you if you're connecting from a network with a very similar home network setup. So let me explain. On my home network here, I have a very similar network setup like a lot of people at home. I have a 192.168.1 address. Now, if I'm connecting from another person's house with a very similar setup, 192.168.1 setup, it's not going to be able to communicate with my home VPN server because there's going to be some confusion in there. You're going to need to set up a different type of setup in your house. For example, maybe 192.168.0 or 10. something that something. Now, for most of you, you're not going to ever worry about this because you're going to be connecting from either a public Wi-Fi network, which will have a very different networking scheme. But this is just something I wanted to point out. So we're logged back here into our Raspberry Pi. We're going to install our first client or profile. We're going to type in Pi VPN add and name our name our profile or client. Make sure there's no spaces. It does support a few characters, but mainly use alpha numeric. I'm going to just type everyday tech. Make sure you have no spaces. And now we've created our first client or profile. All those profiles are going to be stored in configs. And those are going to be used to import into your VPN software on your client side, on your computer or your devices. There are client or applications that are for Windows, Mac, Linux, a lot of different flavors of Linux, and for iOS and for Android. And then you can use this profile to uh, import it into those clients. Now, if you're using a mobile device, iOS and Android, you can say Pi VPN QR, and this will generate a QR code. I'm not gonna do it right now. QR co code that you can use on your device to import that profile very easily. So we're on my Mac here and I've already installed the WireGuard client software. It's put the icon up here. So when we click on that, I already have my current VPN profile already imported here. So it shows right here. So if I click on that, I'm automatically connected to my VPN server here. But the first time you're using this, it'll be empty. And for us to add our profile or import our profile, you can do manage tunnels or import tunnels from file. If I do that, it'll ask me to import the file that we got from our config directory. Now, if you're unable to bring that file over, the other thing you can do is this. You can just say plus and say add empty tunnel. And then you can just go ahead and copy and paste the contents of that profile into this empty space right here. And now I'm showing you my iPad Pro, but this will be very similar to the iPhone and even on the Android app. But to add a profile, we're gonna tap on the plus icon there. We're gonna import from a file. We're gonna scan our QR code that we generated before or created from scratch. And then connect to the VPN server. Simply just toggle one of these buttons here and you're connected to your VPN server. Now that we have our VPN server set up, our home network set up, all the clients installed on our devices, let's talk about practical ways we can use our VPN server. Being connected to a VPN network allows me to make it look like I'm connecting on the web from another location. Now, why would I want to do this? Well, some services out there are geolocation restricted. Now, some of the paid VPN services actually allow you to choose the location you're connecting from. Now, I'm not advocating doing something illegal here. And actually, some of the streaming services are out, out there already block some of the VPN services out there, especially the free ones. Now, of course, this setup here doesn't allow me to choose which location I'm coming from. It's coming from my home network. So for example, I was visiting family in Boston, but I can make it look like I'm streaming from Philadelphia. Now, of course, the other benefit of connecting to a VPN network is that I can securely browse the web even in a public network because there's a secure connection between me and the VPN server. Another advantage is accessing anything I need on my network. So because I'm working for in the office or working around town, not just working from home, oftentimes I need something on my Mac here, a file on my network attached storage. So I can just log into my network here and just get the files I need to. I can remote control my Mac here 
remote desktop into here using a program called VLC. So in other words, when I'm connected to my VPN server here, it's as if my computer was on the network at home, even if I'm at a coffee shop or something. And then the last use case I'll mention is a pretty niche case, but if you're doing some video production or live streaming production for another client, having a VPN server can be very useful. So for example, I have my A10 Mini Pro here, which can be fully controlled via the network. So if I'm logged into a client's network and they have an A10 Mini Pro, I can do all the camera switching for them. Of course, this requires some extra work. You're gonna to need to set up the server on their network, of course, configure their network and do all these things. But for certain users, this might be very, uh, might be a very helpful solution. Well, that's been a way to set up your own VPN server at home. Now, I know the networking stuff can be a little bit confusing, but once you get past that, you're good to go. This solution does support WireGuard and OpenVPN. I do prefer WireGuard because I found the performance to be so much faster. Because I like the way things are set up on my home network, it's kind of nice to know that even if I'm out and about, I can ac access everything on my home network, including my computer and my network attached storage. If you found this video helpful, give it a like, consider subscribing. Till the next one, see ya.